The collapse of our society is here. We're seeing banks now going out there and pressuring pension funds and other banking institutions and companies to dump investments in precious metals and precious metals mining. Why, you would say? Well, it's this whole ESG thing, right? Um, you're supposed to be pro-environment, and you're supposed to be pro-government, uh, and you're supposed to be pro-society and stuff like that. And that means you need to pretend like the fake money is the only kind of money. And any support of the precious metals uh, movement is, well, you know, racist and, uh, and fascist and anti democratic, of course. Um, so we're seeing this, and uh, just so you guys know, October 1st, that's today, um, we are seeing the Wall Street Silver raid on silver. So they're uh, suggesting everyone go and buy up as much uh, uh, physical silver as you can to kind of stick it to the man. So, you know, you can decide to do that if you want to or not. There are no links down below to any certain dealers or anything like that. I'm not doing that to make a buck or anything like that. I just think that everyone will benefit from that. Uh, you can search for the best prices out there. I like walmart.com um, because they got some great deals through AppMex there that you can use your credit card on. Uh, you got uh, AppMex website, silver.com, SD Bullion, uh, JM Bullion, right? Um, a bunch of other places like that. Get it from a reputable dealer, but you can buy your own physical silver. Um, war is brewing over in Russia. That's right. As they call up 1.2 million reservists and conscripts. They said they're only going to do 300,000, but they ended up calling up 1.2 million because... They need that many troops for something? What exactly are they getting ready for? Are they getting ready for World War III? Sure seems that way, folks. See, the collapse doesn't happen gradually and in a way that you can see it coming. What happens is uh, the anatomy of a collapse is you have a drop and then a recovery. But what it does is it depletes the reserves in the system. You know, there's enough stuff going on in the system that, that usually can kind of fix uh, or at least repair some of the damage. Um, you have first drop there, and when it starts to come back to normalize, um, people are going to be like, oh, well, things are fixed, things are good. But the problem is all the reserves in the system are gone. And when you look at financially in the West, we have borrowed up to our eyeballs. There's no money, there's, there's no one to borrow from anymore. The money itself is losing value. If the money is losing value, nobody's going to want to loan it, okay? There's no money in the West anymore. The assets are rapidly being depleted. Gold and silver are fleeing from, from our shores. Manufacturing and actual industrial capability are fleeing from our shores. The capability of generating electricity and power are fleeing from our shores. We can't even produce gasoline and diesel enough for the United States. We have to import refined products from overseas now. That's just sad. In Europe, we have multiple refineries that have been shut down by protests over in France. Basically, it's hard to find a country in the EU or in Europe that is not having massive protests. People are very, very upset. People, people's patience with their governments have gotten this. They've gone from, you know, we're upset to people are are livid, livid, ready to leave work, ready to get out there in the streets, shut down traffic, sh shut down everything. And the Nord Stream bombing, the, the crisis that's happening in Eastern Europe has got everybody extremely on edge. Nobody supports this. Now, not... That, of course, is hyperbole. There's a whole bunch of people that support it. But the simple fact is, in most countries, 
Most people do not support going to war over Eastern Europe. That's just a fact. Most people in the United States, most people in most of the European countries do not support their country going to war over uh, that country over in Eastern Europe that we're not allowed to talk about. Because, you know, we can't talk about such things without um, the uh, algorithm deciding that nobody should watch this video. We know, we know what's going on over there. It is, it, it is a money funneling system and, and the money's not going where it's said to be going to. Billions and billions and billions of dollars are going into this black hole. And if you think that houses aren't being purchased on the Caribbean, if you think that the, that the oligarchs and the powerful elite in that country are not getting extremely wealthy, if you think that 10% isn't being kicked back to the big guy, you got another thing coming. You got another thing coming. Nobody knows where these weapons are going. Nobody knows where the money is going. There is no accounting. They've admitted it. They've admitted it that there is no oversight. There is no oversight. Energy prices are going through the roof after the Nord Stream uh, bombings. Uh, of course, less natural gas getting into Europe. And the fact is that they're not going to have enough energy to get through this winter, it looks like. That's, that's not good. And the simple fact is the taps cannot be turned back on. Because the faucet's broken. When we see what's happening over in Europe, with energy prices going through the roof, Germany is nationalizing anything that's related to energy right now. It's just like, let's find anything that's energy related, let's nationalize it. Gas pumps across France are drying up because of the strikes and the protests that are going on there. And of course, across society, not just the money, not just, um, but even speech itself, you know, the list of things that you're not allowed to discuss anymore or talk about grows longer. You know, certain elements on the periodic table can't talk about those anymore. Certain geographical regions of the world can't talk about that. Certain people off limits. Don't don't even say, you know, T, you know, the guy down in Florida who used to be president, don't don't even say that name because not allowed to do that. Certain amendments and documents, can't, can't talk about those. Lots of scientific things these days is just, can't be talking about that. You know, facts like chromosomes and, you know, uh, heartbeats and, and, and weather. Oh, don't, don't start talking about weather. You can't do that anymore. And um, can't talk about other people without, you know, making sure that you document all their pronouns because... You know, you wouldn't want to be a racist bigot and get canceled. We could, we could discuss all these things in a calm, thoughtful way, but, you know, that would be, that would be racist, fascist, hate speech, and anti-democratic, of course. Anti-democratic, of course. Um, cer certainly wouldn't want to interrupt people's safe spaces with facts and inconvenient truths. No, we wouldn't want to do that. We have hard, hard choices ahead. You know, when you have a, a toddler trying to get them to understand uh, difficult, difficult things, um, difficult times is very, very hard because they can't compute it, right? Hard choices. Well, I don't want either of those choices. We are uh, societies of toddlers who cannot uh, endure facts that go against their, their wishes. And the idea of power being shut off, hard times that, that you have to, to, to rise above, is beyond the, the, the minds of, of many people in our societies today. 
They cannot fathom that anything bad could possibly happen, and they certainly can't fathom that it might be the government's fault. The politicians that they don't like, they can't understand how those politicians have basically sold their own nations up the river for 40 pieces of silver. That's where we are, folks. That's where we are. The society collapse that is coming is going to be economic. It's cultural. We're already seeing the cultural collapse. Uh, you wonder how much worse it can get. Well, it can get worse. It can get worse. And then when we look at that, we look at militarily. And just not just Wall Street, but we're talking about Main Street businesses. People losing their jobs, businesses going under. Across the board, we see the collapse of the food supply system, the energy system, the labor markets. The simple fact is, the more I look at the labor markets and we say, where did all these workers go? A lot of them went into the ground. That's a simple fact. Did they die of the cough cough? They didn't. We know that they're not logged as people who even had the cough cough when they perished. Just a lot of people having issues with the ticker or having a stroke. A lot more than usual. A lot more than usual. Why is that? Well, we're not allowed to ask that question here. You might have to look that up on your own. Why there's this massive excess mortality rate that's not related to the cough cough. Kind of started around when everyone started getting the pat on the shoulder for cough cough. But uh, nobody knows. Nobody is allowed to do the scientific studies to figure out why. There's a lot of morticians out there who are saying that they've been seeing increasingly strange things in people's bodies. Very strange things in people's blood and such. You can look those things up too. We're not allowed to talk about that kind of stuff, but I'm sure there's absolutely nothing to hide whatsoever. Simple fact is that if people are on the ground, they can't be working at the store, they can't be working at the restaurant, they can't be working at the office, can they now? And that's where we find ourselves as a society around the world. Western societies all over the place cannot deal with simple facts, cannot discuss the challenges that we face together as societies. And so we face societal collapse. All right, folks, if you found this video useful, helpful, you might want to check out this other video from me right here. Otherwise, I will see you later. Steve Poplar out.